as I was saying, all the big guys will merge into one after correct explanations of the mysteries and revelations will have been disclosed. This one God will in fact be the Antichrist, who will explain that the various scriptures have been misunderstood and misinterpreted, and that the religions of old are responsible for turning brother against brother and nation against nation. Therefore, old religions must be abolished to make way for the new age, new world religion, representing the one God Antichrist they see before them. Naturally, this superbly staged falsification will result in dissolved social and religious disorder on a grand scale, each nation blaming the other for the deception, setting loose millions of programmed religion, religious fanatics through demonic possession on a scale never witnessed before. In addition, this event will occur at a time of profound worldwide political anarchy and general consternation, created by some worldwide catastrophe. And catch this, the United Nations even now plans to use Beethoven's Ode to Joy as the anthem for the introduction of the New Age One World Religion. The advancement of the technique of artificial thought and communication propel us toward the third step in the Blue Beam project that goes along with the telepathic and electronically augmented two-way communication where ELF, VLF, and LF waves will reach each person from within his or her own mind, convincing each of them that their own God is speaking to them from the very depth of their own soul. Such rays from satellites are fed from the memories of computers that have stored massive data about every human on Earth and their languages. The rays will then interlace with their natural thinking to form what we call diffuse artificial thought. Now, according to Lieutenant Colonel John Alexander in an article that he wrote called Telepathic Electronic Two-Way Communication, he says, quote, If it is possible to feed artificial thought into the multigenic field via satellite, the mind control of the entire planet is now possible. An individual's only resistance would be to constantly question the motivation behind their thoughts and not act upon thoughts which they consider to be outside their own ideological, religious, moral boundaries." End quote. Well, isn't that exactly what we're trying to do with this program? I mean, ha take a look at our thoughts, at our beliefs, where they're coming from, who's giving them to us. Yeah. So that's really good practice to prepare for this should it ever actually happen, isn't it? Right, you got it. The fourth step concerns the universal supernatural manifestation with electronic means. It contains three different orientations. One is to make mankind believe that an alien off-world invasion is about to occur at every major city on Earth in order to provoke each major nation to use its nuclear weapons in order to strike back. This way, the United Nations Court will require that all those nations which launch nuclear weapons to disarm when the invasion is shown to have been false. And how will the United Nations know that the invasion was false? They will have staged it, of course. The second is to make Christians believe that the rapture is going to occur with the supposed divine intervention of an alien, off-world, civilization coming to rescue earthlings from the savage and merciless demons. Its goal will be to dispose of all significant opposition to the implementation of the new world order in one major stroke, actually within hours of the beginning of the sky show. The third orientation in the fourth step is a mixture of electronic and supernatural forces. 
The waves used at that time will allow supernatural forces to travel through optical fibers, coaxial cables, TV, electrical and phone lines, in order to penetrate to everyone at once through major appliances. Embedded chips will already be in place. The goal of this deals with global satanic ghosts projected all around the world in order to push all populations to the edge of hysteria and madness, to drown them into a wave of suicide, murder, and permanent psychological disorders. After the Night of the Thousand Stars, worldwide populations will be ready for the new Messiah to reestablish order and peace at any cost, even at the cost of abdication of freedom. Yeah, that's your United Nations at work, all right. Is that wild or what? I mean, this should go way beyond outrage. This is a United Nations plan, supposedly. Uh, the two guys that discovered this plan were summarily taken care of by heart attacks, at both at a young age. And, uh, well, that's your United Nations at work. But oddly enough, over the last couple of weeks, I read a book. Amazing. I read a book called um, Caesar's Messiah, Roman Conspiracy to Invent Jesus by Joseph Adwell. But before I start, I, I really don't want to lose my Christian listener. So let, let me suck up a little bit. Um, this is a book by a Bible scholar. Uh, it's his interpretation. Uh, so stick with us. Listen, you, you've stuck with us so far. So listen to this man's idea. Here's the situation. Back in Rome, and no one really knows exactly how long ago, uh, at the time of Jesus, Rome, would rule, uh, Rome was in the uh, hegemony business. They would go out and they would, you know, they would go and they would conquer and enslave nations. And uh, an important part of this enslavement was they wanted all these newly conquered nations to worship Caesar. Well, that's of course. And that was easily done because most people, uh, or most of these cultures, were worshiping, uh, um, you know, many gods to begin with. So they said, sure, we'll worship Caesar. It will put him right up there with the tree goddess, the rain god, and the, the deity of beer. But then there was the Jews. These guys were called zealots. And, and they really were because uh, they were savage fighters. They would oppose the Romans on every, on every turn. And of course, they couldn't worship Caesar. They couldn't throw him in with your other gods because, you know, the Jews only had one god. And that was real important to so even under torture, they wouldn't uh, submit to the Roman domination. So the Flavian Caesars decided to create a new Messiah for the Jews. Now this Messiah would fulfill Jewish prophecies and cut down on the expense that they incurred fighting with the Jews all the time and torturing them. And, you know, it's messy business. So they created a new Messiah that would do a couple things. First of all, not oppose Rome. Uh, these people would turn the other cheek. I think it's turn the, is it turn the other cheeks or turn the other cheek. <laughs> well, they just say cheek. <laughs> and even more importantly, to pay taxes. You know, render under Caesar what is Caesar, render under God what is God. And of course, God, in a sense, is Caesar because they wanted him to worship Caesar. Well, they didn't have high tech, so they do it through stealth. Uh, and we've watched this, the elites do that down through the ages, and they really haven't changed much. They had adopted a, a Jewish man named Josephus and made him part of the Flavian family. The Flavian family was the family that came up with this, this plot. And according to Adwell, this Josephus, familiar with the Jewish traditions and familiar with Rome now, um, wrote two texts, the New Testament, and he also wrote the War of the Jews. And when they published them, they backdated the New Testament so that it looked like it was written 70 years prior so that the prophecies of Jesus and Daniel and others 
would come true in the historical text, War of the Jews. Pretty clever. So maybe, just maybe, the elites created messiahs before to serve their purposes. Anyhow, it's something to think about. Thanks, Christians, for uh, in the audience for listening through that thing that probably bumps up against your beliefs. It's got to. So, what do you think about them then? Well, at least they didn't have demons coming through the refrigerator tables, or or gods manifesting in the sky. Right, or ELF ways talking subconsciously to you. You think it's your own thoughts. Yeah. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed our trip through uh, the alien messiah ideas. So to wrap up, I don't know uh, who the alien messiah or if there'll be an alien messiah uh, or when the UN will decide to roll out that, that most bizarre of tactics. But for one thing, I know for one thing, whoever he is or she is, they'll likely work for the Rockefellers. The cabal, you know, the big club. And if you think I'm being too hard on the Rockefellers in this podcast, I don't think so. I think they would be honored by the credit and the attention. Uh, let's hear from an excerpt from David Rockefeller's 2003 memoirs. David Rockefeller wrote in his 2003 memoirs, Some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economic structure, one world if you will. If that is the charge, I stand guilty and I am proud of it. So, by way of a quick review, we started off with the Sky Dreadnought uh, and its capabilities. Then we went into Clinton, Reagan, and Dewey, uh, these three minions hoping for an alien invasion. We learned about the Disclosure Project and that all aliens are benevolent. We also know, learned that all evil that's done by supposed aliens are really done by your government tax dollars at work. Then we learned about the breakaway civilization that could make the, dread, the sky dreadnought possible. And the most bizarre of all proposals, Project Bluebeam. Finally, I, I gave a little book report on Caesar's Messiah, and that was our podcast for this evening. And it sure does look like the same scenario all over again, doesn't it? Like writing history. The, the club, they're writing the history, and, and the chapter that's about to take place could be the next Messiah, which everyone's been waiting for right. anyone anyway, right? So we're all geared up for right. the next so new Messiah. So watch out for your refrigerator so and your other... new Messiah going to look like? Is it going to be an alien? Is it going to be... They said... They're going to blend the, all the religious figures together into one. So what's that going to look like when it's all blended together? I don't know. Definitely look Mideastern. I, I kind of picture Sasha Baron Cohen riding in on a camel like he did in the movie Dictator. I'm waving to all the people as he walks, goes down the street in New York City. All right, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for tuning in, whether you've tuned into Going Beyond Radio or you're listening on YouTube. We appreciate spending this hour with you. And be sure and visit our blog, pineconeutopia.yolasite.com. You'll find a tab there for show notes where you can go more in depth into all the information we've covered in this podcast. So thank you once again. Leave us a note. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, take care. Until next time, be nice to each other.